Hello everybody, welcome to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and today we will be discussing backflush costing and this is still for the series for cost accounting and control. Before anything else, please like, share, and subscribe to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH. We don't have any handout for this specific lesson because the problem and the given are already provided to you in the board as well as the templates for our calculations and journal entry so that we can finish the video early. Okay. So, this is backflush costing under the concept of JIT inventory system or what we call as just inside. Okay, so let's start with discussing this problem. The following balances were made available by Minzy Company for the month of March. So, we have here beginning and ending balances of your raw and in process account and finished goods inventory account. Again, in JIT and backflush costing, we don't use a separate raw materials inventory and in, uh, work in process inventory and we have it directly as RIP or raw and in process. So we have here the beginning balances, March 1 and March 31, and also their components broken down as to materials and conversion cost. And then there is also a purchase of raw materials during the period or during March of 485,000. And we also have some conversion costs applied here, direct labor and overhead, which totals 565,000. Let's write the journal entries and do some back flush. Okay. First is your purchase of raw materials. So we simply debit raw and in process account. So not debiting raw materials inventory. This is JIT. So you put it directly in the production process. So debit raw and in process credit accounts payable. Or if you paid it in cash, then credit cash. Okay. For your raw material purchases of 485,000. So that's simply debit. 485,000 and then another credit for 485,000. It's that simple. Okay, now for our next entry, which is the application of conversion cost, so we have here direct labor of 200,000 and your applied overhead of 365,000, which totals 565,000. We put that directly as a debit to your cost of goods sold. So for the total, that is 500. 65,000 and then we credit factory salaries payable for your direct labor of 200,000 and your manufacturing overhead for 365,000 okay now that we have established these entries we are now ready for the back flush calculations the first thing to back flush is the raw materials component from your raw and in process going to finished goods. So the end point is how much is the raw materials that is included inside your goods manufacturing. So this is how you do it. Your first is raw materials on RIP on March 1. So raw materials on RIP on March 1 gives you 10,000. So we have here 10,000. And then you add any raw material purchases for the period. In this case, that's 485,000. So we add here 485,000. And then we deduct your raw materials on the RIP as of March 31. So materials, RIP March 31, 12,000. Okay, so that will be 10,000 plus 485,000 plus, uh, sorry, sorry, minus 12,000, that is 483,000, the amount of raw materials on your goods manufactured. Again, that's 10 plus 485 minus 12, we have here 483,000, okay? And that is the raw materials component inside of the goods that you have already completed. That's why we debit it to finished goods inventory, 483,000. Credit raw and in process, 483,000. Basically, you're just transferring the raw material amount from your raw and in process account going to your goods manufactured, your goods completed, which is your finished goods inventory. Okay? The next one is to back flush raw materials from finished goods going to COGS. Okay? Earlier, we have already, um, uh, we already did an entry on applying your conversion cost, which is your labor and overhead. So we have to do it now on material side, okay? Although for conversion cost later, we have an adjustment to make, but let's talk about that later. 
Okay. So the for the first step is you have to get your raw materials on your goods completed, which have we already completed earlier, which is well bring it down here, four hundred eighty three thousand. And then the thing to do is how much is your raw materials on finished goods inventory at March one? So at the beginning of the period, March one materials finished goods seventy five thousand. So I put here seventy five thousand. Lesser raw materials on finished goods inventory as of March 31. So materials, finished goods inventory, March 31, 52,000. So I deduct here 52,000. Okay? So we do the math. 483,000 plus 75,000 minus 52,000. That gives you 506,000. And what is this 506,000? The raw materials component of your cost of goods sold. So if you look at here actually... We already have the raw materials component of your cost of goods sold and we already have also the conversion cost or your labor and overhead components of your cost of goods sold. Well, looking at it, I think we're done. But actually, no, we have to adjust your conversion cost and we have to analyze them further if we need adjustments on cost of goods sold. So this is what we do now here. But before that, I'll do the entry first. So. For 506,000 raw materials component of your cost of goods sold, we debit cost of goods sold of 506,000 and credit it coming from your finished goods inventory like this one, which is 506,000. Okay, now let's do your cost of goods sold adjustment through the analysis of your conversion cost. Earlier, you have a conversion cost that you earlier applied, which is this amount, the one you debited directly to cost of goods sold of 565000 and that will be your starting point. So, your 565000 is your CC, your conversion cost as applied. So, we have here 565000 The first thing to do is get the CC component in your raw iron process as of March 1. CC component, March 1, RIP, 21750 so I put here 21750. Okay? And then get your CC in RIP March 31. So CC in RIP for March 31, that's 24,000. So I deduct here 24,000. Okay? We do the math, that's 565,000 plus 21750 minus 24,000. That is 562,750. Okay, 565 plus 21,750 minus 24,000. Okay, 562,750. So that is your CC or the conversion cost component. Again, that's conversion cost component of your goods completed, of your goods manufactured. CC and goods manufactured, I just rewrite this here. So that is 562,750. Okay? Let's continue the analysis whether we need adjustments or not. So CC in finished goods as of March 1. CC, finished goods, March 1, 120,000. So I put here 120,000. Less your CC in FGI on March 31. CC, finished goods, March 31, 94,500. 94,500, okay? So what we have computed here is 562,750 plus 120,000 minus 94,500. That gives you here 588,250. Again, that's 562,750 plus 120,000 minus 94,500. That's 588,250. That is the correct amount of your conversion cost and cost of goods sold. Okay, now you have to compare. You initially applied your conversion cost at 565,000, the one that we have here, but the actual amount of your conversion cost and cost of goods sold is 588,250. We will now be doing a comparison as to the CC applied of 565,000. Okay, and as you can see, from 565,000, it should be 588,250. So, you get the difference first. 588,250 minus 565,000. That gives you 23,250. And your adjustment should be going upwards. Okay? So now, what will be your adjusting entry? The first thing to look at is, you look at your CC 
in RIP March 1 and CC in RIP March 31. I'm referring to this one. Okay, I'm referring to this one. CC in RIP March 1, this one, and then CC in RIP March 31. From 21,750 increase to 24,000. So let's get the difference. 24,000 minus 21,750, there is an increase of, coming from here, this is an increase of 2,250 increase. Okay? Since there is an increase in raw and in process, your adjusting entry would involve an increase in the raw and in process account. Okay? So we debit raw and in process for the increase of 2,250. Okay? The next one is your CC in FGI. So, your CC in FGI includes CC, FGI beginning, 120,000. CC, FGI ending, 94,500. So, it went down actually. So, that is 25,500 decrease. Okay? So, you will include a credit to finished goods inventory amounting to 25,500. Okay, and then the next one is your cost of goods sold itself as to your CC. So your CC in cost of goods sold is 588,250 and you compare it to CC as applied to 565,000 so you need an increase in cost of goods sold of 23,250. So you debit cost of goods sold which amounts to 23,000. 250 and we satisfy the balance of debit and credit as well. Okay, so now let's compute for the correct amount of your cost of goods sold under this backslash costing. Okay, so initially you debited here your uh, conversion cost of 565,000 and then that's another debit here for your uh, raw materials on cost of goods sold which is 506,000 and your debit adjustment of 23,250. Okay, let's get the total. 565,000 plus 506,000 plus 23,250. That gives you 1,094,250. And then we have 94,250. to check. Now, how much is your raw materials on cost of goods sold? Your raw materials on cost of goods sold is 506,000. And then, how much is your conversion cost on cost of goods sold? It's 588,250. Okay, so this is the complete component of your total cost of goods sold. So we have 506,000 plus 588,250. That's also 1,094,250, which is the same amount. Okay? And that's how you do your analysis and calculations under backlash costing. I'll move out of the frame so that you can do a screenshot. And that's the end of our discussion today. Thank you and have a great day.